Hello and welcome to what's going to be quite a quick Unreal tutorial video on how you can make your game black and white and add a really cool old timey feel to your game. Um, so I'm going to break this into basic and advanced. Uh, if you only want to make a black and white game then it's actually really simple to set it so your entire game world is black in black and white. Um, but I am also going to break it down to being a bit more advanced and have kind of a Schindler's List style black and white where you can set specific objects that do show colour where the most of the world will stay in black and white. So we'll start with the basic one. You need to make sure you have a post-process volume in your world. So I've just loaded up the default Unreal level and that's already got a global post-process volume. If you don't have one of these already then you just need to drag one in and set the bounds to be infinite so that it stretches all the way across your world. Um, you need to go to the color grading section, you want to tick saturation, and then you want to set this value all the way down to zero. And that that's it, that's the basic version. Everything is now black and white, um, and you get this cool old time effect. So now that that's done, um, I'm going to go into the more advanced one now, um, so if that's all you needed, thank you very much for watching. Uh, but I'm going to do something a little bit more advanced, and I want to have this single chair stay in colour while the rest of my world stays in black and white. So I need to undo what I did in the global post process volume, so for this one I don't want the saturation to be zero. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to create a new material and it's going to be a post-process material that we add to our volume that will run through the different objects in the world and add effects to them. So process volume, black and white. Um, so just need to open up this new material. Uh, and go down to the material domain and set this to be a post-process volume. Uh, we'll just save that for now. Um, and then come back into your post-process volume. If you go into post-process materials, add an element to this array. Um, you want to do an asset reference and we want to just pick our post-process volume black and white. And as you can see, our entire screen has gone black at the minute. Um, if you're to set this to zero, your screen comes back. Um, and that's because we've not actually set anything up in the material yet. So we'll start there. Um, if you open this up, your new material, and you are actually going to be looking for a scene texture. And we want this scene texture to be the post-processing input zero. Um, basically, this will output this color that comes out is whatever. So if I was just to drag that straight to the emissive color and save this, and I was to go back to the scene, you'd see everything is now back as normal. Um, this just gets the color out of what your scene looks like before you've done any post-processing to it. Um, so if we just plug that directly into the output, then we just get the scene color as the output. Um, now, if we want to change this to be black and white, um, Instead of just pulling the color straight in, we're going to do a desaturate on it. So desaturation, and then if we put that into the emissive color instead and save, if we go back to the scene now, it's in black and white. Um, so now we're back to the where we were before with the basic version, but we've done this through material. Now, for the more advanced bit of setting it to only work on specific objects, we need to set up a few things in Unreal. So what you need to do is you need to go to your project settings first. Um, you want to go to rendering and then you want to look for the custom destensil pass. So it'll be in the post processing section. Custom depth stencil pass. It should already be set to enabled. I think that is the default. But what you want to do is click on enabled with stencil. And I'll explain the, this a bit better about what this actually does. Um, this allows us to create masks. And what a mask means is I can click on this object, for instance. And if I go down to the rendering, um, you're going to have to extend out your rendering so it shows the more advanced features. So normally you'll only see 
uh, your rendering will show only this. If you click on this, it'll show advanced arrow. Scroll down to render custom depth pass. If you click on that, you can now set this custom depth stencil value. And this allows us to create or specify objects on different stencils. So if I set this to one, for instance, I can now apply effects to all objects that are set to one. Um, if I, it was set to two, I could apply objects that were, you know, logic to all objects with value two and so on and so forth. I think it goes, I'm not sure if there's a maximum. I think it goes up to like two, five, five or something. You probably wouldn't want that many different types of masks anyway, but it's a nice little thing to bear in mind. Um, so now that we've got that, what do we do with it? Well, if we go back to our material, what we want to do in here, if we just move this down a little bit, we want to get another scene texture out. And this time we want to set the texture ID to be our custom stencil. And whenever the, the, the texture that comes out has a custom stencil, um, we can apply some logic here. So if we pull out the color and we apply a component mask to it, we want to untick the green value. We only want the, the red value from this mask for coming out of the color. Um, and there's a few different ways we can do this. So you can, you can do a simple if statement here, um, just to do some logic. So you can say, uh, and then if we drag off the B and just make a constant, um, and yeah, we could have that as zero. Uh, basically, this if statement will plug that into the emissive color. Um, what we're saying here is if if the object we have, if the mask, uh, like if the custom sensor value is set to be greater than zero, so in our case one, then we would actually just want to take the scene uh, input so we would drag that into there um, so that would just be the scene color however if it is zero or even less than zero um, then we would want it to go through the desaturation node um, so you can see if you've not used if statements in materials before it's basically this is the color that will come through if a is greater than b this is if they're equal that is if A is less than. And now, if we go back to the scene, you can see, because I've set this stencil value to one, this object is in color and the rest of the world stays in black and white. If I set that to zero, it goes back to black and white. You know, because we used greater than, I could say it to six and it would come back in color or whatever you want. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, I was quite surprised I didn't see any tutorials on this already that don't really go into depth on what you actually need to do. So I just thought I'd make this quick one and I really hope it was useful for you. Um, I definitely plan on using it for one of the kind of games I've got on on the back burner at the minute. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share what I'd found out with you. Uh, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you found it useful, I subscribe to the channel because I post little things that I find like this quite often. Um, I hope you, the video was informative for you and thank you very much for watching. See you next time.